Oh. We move, we move. We move. We move, we move, we move. We send people then. We live in the mix. We move, we move, Jose, we move, we move. We move. Come on, Dolan. We're air, we're air. <laughs> hey! Hey, James. Today's session was mad. It was a mistake. Jay supplies in the building. 10 press ups. <laughs> 10 down, let's go. <laughs> hey, James. But I'm not gonna lie. I'm getting stronger though. I'm getting stronger. And Jay supplies in, in the mix. You get me? If you want crepes or anything, Jay supplies is there. You get me? Shout him, shout him. Hey, hey, Jay, still. Hey, listen, I need some shorts and tees and that, like to work out and when I go play football and that too, fam. You get me? So I need some Nike shorts, Adidas shorts, like tops and that. To play football and work out and you get me? Just letting you know still. I forgot to ask you the other day. But we moved though. I'm just waiting for my guest to get me somewhere here. Hey, I love you, don't gas, man. Yo, Dave Ocean, we move. Hey, we move, Ocean. That's my jigger there from the jump, you know. Ocean, my brother, that. Um, I'm just waiting for the guest to come now, Ocean. Still, James will love you. I'm waiting for my man to come now. We move, though. Um, Where is he? LB, Skelly. In the building, everyone in the building, I'm just waiting for the big man, you get me? J.H. Hey, J, what, the workout making man look run? I love you, don't guess me! Hey, James. Hey, James. I'm joking, I'm joking, man. Man, still more compared. It's, hey, hey, V. Hey, Ocean. <laughs> hey, JKD. JKD, this is not... JKD, listen. This is not the the show. This is a live where I'm going to be chatting to people. You get me? Hey, hey, Ocean. Ocean, you see the people that I'm in the chat with? Even catches in the building. We moved, though. Hey, JKD. Um, JKD. Hey, Hey, Ocean, you see the people that I'm in on, um, what's it called? That I do the thing with. Listen, James Alabi, Femi, Deji, Abs, Lanway, and Morgan. Everyone's all, everyone's all bigger than me, bro. Everyone's all big, like, everyone's, the arms are like that. I'm the only one that's kind of, like, you get me lean a bit, like, all them men are muscle men still. Let me see, Jay. We move though. Yeah, JH is in the building. I'm trying to wait for the thing to connect right now. I don't know what's happening still. A lie, ocean. Them man. WWE. Catch up what the trim looking? No, you know what? It's five days old now. You get me? I need to I need to get a shape up or something, Catcher. I'm waiting for um Justin's thing to connect. Cause I don't think he's he's on the other side. He's on the other side that way. He's in Miami right now, I think. Yeah. He's in Miami chilling, so the connection's moving mud. Hey, Justin, I'm trying to, I'm sending the request now. He's in Miami right now, so I don't know, the connection could be, oh, there he, yes! 
Yo, I'm finally, bro. I'll be waiting time to get in this room, bro. Sorry. <laughs> so I was thinking, I was thinking, where is he? Are you, <laughs> how you been, Just? Yeah, all right. Not too bad, you, bro. I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. How's it? How's it going? How's it? How's it going? Yeah, all right, man. Uh, well, we're near enough out of lockdown soon, isn't it? So, a couple things opened. Shops are now opening. Restaurants will be open like next week. Yeah. With like fifty percent capacity, but. Uh, yeah, it's all right. I mean, here is here is what it is, you know. Miami is Miami, so yeah. I've did a lot of work uh, with the team off the field at the moment while uh, we can't play and stuff. So we're in the building process right now. So yeah. let's see, uh, let's see how things go and see where it takes us. You get me? Okay. Is the family, is the family, and everyone up there now? No, no, they're still in England because they can't travel yet. So. Uh, it's just a way for the travel restrictions to change and then uh, they'll travel up here or I'll go back and travel with them back here or uh, we're just waiting bro we're just waiting so for the time being I'm just uh, running and keeping fit until we get to start back yeah how's it but how is it that knowing that you're there you're trying to keep fit and knowing that all the family's back in London or where are they in London or yeah, they're Manchester away, but yeah, that's that's the hardest part, bro. I'm telling you, to be to be away from your family and all that. Trust me, it's it's not easy, bro. It's not it's not easy. I mean, I done it in uh, Cincinnati for nine months, bro. It's it's the hardest time. It's the most stressful time. It's it's headache, but you know, some things you got to do in in life, and uh, you know, you want the best for your family. So there's certain things you got to do, and some things you got to sacrifice at the time, you know, and. If it wasn't for this virus, they would be here now. But uh, unfortunately, this is the situation. So uh, we're dealing with it as best as possible. How's 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 Broski? How's, how's um Gavin? Gavin, all right? Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, we've been playing bingo lately, you know, over this uh, Zoom chat thing. But yeah, he's all right, bro. He's all right. He's got his kids there and his family there, so he's lucky he's with his family. But yeah, he's all right, bro. He's all right. Everything's good with him. Just just to touch up on things like for the people that don't know you, obviously I know I know of you. You know, you've had a great career. Like, just for the people that don't know, like, let's take it back and where you're from and where, um, obviously, you was playing for Arsenal and where it all started. Yes, yeah, so I was, well, started from playing Sunday League, you know, uh, yeah. for Redbridge United. Uh, then got scouted by Arsenal uh, and a few other London teams, uh, you know, West Ham, Tottenham. Uh, but for me, being an Arsenal supporter, I always wanted to play for Arsenal. So to get the opportunity to be part of the academy was my first choice and a fantastic opportunity. So I got the opportunity. Uh, I was there right up until uh, the first team stage. So it was great. You know, I, I skipped some of school because of football reasons. I went to like a football school in, in uh, Hines Park where we missed some lessons and done football, which um, I look back at it now and say it was good for me because I achieved great things, you know. Uh, and then, yeah, I got into the, the, the Arsenal first team. Which was good. Played a lot of games. Played in uh, probably every cup competition for for the team and for someone who supported uh, Arsenal and uh, following them for so many years to to get you know the chance to play for the first team in every competition that they was in was a dream come true. You know. Of course, of course. Let's go. Let's go back. Then. But you come through the ranks and that. Uh, yeah. like, how was it? How was it for you? Like, how did you? Feel? It was tough. It was tough. I mean, even in the academy, I mean, I was I was a striker back in the day, bro. Straight bare goals, you know. <laughs> Everyone, listen, every defender, I had <laughs> every defender say there was a striker that started off at front. And no, like, I swear, bro. I swear, number eight, bro. Top goal scorer, bro. Bagging the goals for fun. <laughs> but no, no, no. I was a striker. Like I was a striker, and you know, uh, my path in football and. Uh, at Arsenal wasn't a striker uh, but I remember one guy who was the defender at the time at the right back didn't turn up for a game and the manager asked me do I want to go and play at right back and I said yeah why not you know I'll do anything for the team I'll give it a go and uh, bro it was the best thing yeah changed my, changed my game changed my career everything never looked back since never looked back since no and I think I played there Ever since uh, right back, and I think it was the best thing for me. Yeah, when you got when you first got your, a, a taste of first again, like you come through the ranks, you ever think? Obviously, I know we all think that 
we want to become professional footballers. But did you ever think you'd make a debut and like play at Arsenal, that first team, alongside them players that played? No, to be fair, I didn't. I mean, I dreamt of it. Uh, I thought I could do it. Uh, at the time, I was, I think, 60, 17, I was nearly going to get released. Mm. Uh, it wasn't until Paul Davis, you know, said to Liam Brady to give him a chance, uh, and he gave me a chance. But no, I mean, I think, you know, I was one of the players that was always training with the first team uh, on a regular basis. So I felt like, you know, like if I kept pushing and pushing and working hard and learning from the top players, I could make it. And, yeah. you know, luckily I did. Uh, but no, it was, it was a lot of hard work, but something that uh, I look back on and say, I'm, I'm glad I achieved it. And, you know, at the time, Arsenal was a great team, so what a time to, to break into the team. No, of course, because I was, I was um, one of my interviews, I was talking to Fabrice as well. So your age group must have, you must have had a lot of great footballers and a lot of great talent in your team. Yeah. Yeah, we had some top, top talented players. And a lot of players, you think, like, why did they not make it, you know? Yeah. Uh, they didn't make it for different reasons. Uh, some went on to different clubs and achieved great things. But, uh, no, nah, there was so many talented players. I mean, you know, at the time, we was the best youth team going really uh there was loads of players loads of players that come and uh, come and went and uh you know at the end of the day not everyone can make it yeah of course uh, and, and at the arsenal time we was uh doing really well so not everyone uh could make it to the first team not everyone could even make it into the 18 of our uh academy team so you know others went on to achieve great things elsewhere yeah of course having having been debut how did that make you feel was more hungry, like did it make you more hungry to you know to kick on and play games? Yeah, it was uh, going to Highbury, uh, walking up the stairs and uh, being part of that for the first time. Uh, you know, you get a little insight into what it's like as a as a professional player. You know, uh, so for me, it was like no, I want I want to be involved in this more often. I like the atmosphere. I like the players and uh, getting on the field. Uh, uh, playing, you know, in front of the, the fans is what uh, spurred God and want me to, to play and achieve even more things at, at Arsenal. No, of course, that's great, that's great. Was there ever that moment, you know, you're travelling and a coach, you're thinking, and I'm, I'm here, like, I'm, I'm alongside, you know, the Henri's, the Burkham, or like, was you, no, I wouldn't say Starstruck. I believe you, you would have been starstruck. No, yeah, of course. I think, I think even up until I left Arsenal, I was starstruck, bro. I admit, yeah, I, I was. Yeah, of course. I mean, you're looking at them players and you're thinking, you know, as me as a young uh, player growing up, I used to chase after the Arsenal bus when they won things on, the, on a parade. So for me then to be on the first team coach with them, of course you're starstruck, bro. Like, it's, it's normal, you know? Yeah, I'm looking up and I'm thinking, wow, you've won so much. You've achieved great things for the team, you know. This is what is Arsenal and I'm part of that. So, yeah, at times I was starstruck and maybe that's what uh, kind of stopped me achieving bigger things at Arsenal. Uh, but, yeah, for sure, I, I was starstruck. Uh, but in a way that when I left Arsenal, I realised what I'd left and, and I learned a lot uh, being part of that the whole group and set when you left, was you left? Was you disappointed, like leaving, or did you think this is another chance for me, you know, to kick on with my career and like, prove myself? To yeah, of course. Up? At first, I was disappointed. Of course, you're leaving your your boyhood team, but uh, it was over a decision where do I just stay at Arsenal and just you know be happy to say that I'm an Arsenal player, or you know tell everyone yeah I'm a, I play for Arsenal, blah blah blah, but train every day and just be happy to be a training player, you know. Yeah. Or do I want to go out uh, to a different team somewhere else uh, and play regular football and kind of make a name for yourself and your own path in, in football, really? So for me, it was the chance to go out and play regular football rather than just uh, be happy to say I'm at Arsenal. I wanted to, to play regular football, play every week. And you know, as a player, there's nothing worse than trading every week and then not being in, firstly, not being in the first eleven. And then not being in the 18 at all. So, for me, I wanted to fight for, for the first team place. And for me, it was an opportunity to go out and play and make a career uh, for myself. When you left, was it, when you left, was it Middlesbrough? Yeah, Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough, yeah. With Southgate. So, Southgate signed me. It was really good. Um, it was really good. It was tough that we got relegated, but 
you know, we didn't do enough to stay in the Premier League. So uh, it was kind of different, you know, going from a team like Arsenal at the top of the league to go to, to Middlesbrough. Uh, at the time, we was fighting uh, relegation towards the end of the season, which was, which was tough. But um, it kind of moulds uh, the kind of person you, you, you become to be in. Yeah. Uh, I'll never regret going to Middlesbrough because I think it was a great for my career. And I played a lot of games for them in the Premier League and in the Championship. So it, it was a good experience. No, I, I can I can tell. But with, with that saying, the boyhood club Arsenal, you're moving on to a whole new scenery, Middlesbrough. Like you're originally <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, how did you take that? In? What was that, that? What was that like? Moving to a whole new scenery and. Do you know what? At first, it was. Do you know what helped it? I went to Sunderland on loan for a season. Yeah. So and that's not far from Middlesbrough. So I think the first time I'd left home and left London to play regular football was Sunderland. Just before you know, when I first broke into the first one, I went on Sunderland. Went to Sunderland for a first season uh, for a year. So for me, that was kind of a help in my transition to Middlesbrough. Because I'm telling you, when I first went to Sunderland, bro, it was like, I was by myself. And it's like, I don't know, bro. Going from London to living, living down south to living up north is a completely different lifestyle. Like, completely different. Completely different. I had to do everything by myself. Like, normally I can, like, just call my mum and say, mum, how do I do this? Dad, how do I do that? Like, do you know what I mean? You've got them there. But then when you're living by yourself, it's, 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 it's tough. It kind of, you kind of grow up quite fast, you know? Um, and luckily, I had like a mentor and, and a guide, uh, Naira Norsworthy, who um, helped me settle in uh, at Sunderland and in the north, northeast. So that kind of helped, you know, when you've got someone who's from London, lived up north for uh, a little while, he kind of helps you, introduces you to, to people you need to know and helps you around the city. So for me, it was good to have him. But... Uh, when I actually got the call to, to move to Middlesbrough, it was like, right, you know, one day I'm training at Arsenal, next me you get a phone call, right, tomorrow you've got to be up, up north. Yeah. So it was I had just moved into my apartment then, so I was like, right, I need to pack up all my stuff and leave. So it's like, bro, you've got to like pack up everything you can pack up now and just head out up north, as, you know, six, five hours, six hour drive, you know, ready for training the next morning. So it was, it was, I was excited, bro. I was excited. I'm not going to lie. My dad drove up with me uh, just to help me, you know, settle in and, and, and stuff like that and get used to the place. So it was good. It was good. It was tough at first to get used to the city and the way of life up there. It's completely different to, to London. But uh, yeah, I was up there for like five, six years. So it was like a second home to me. So I quite enjoyed my time up there um, on and off the field. No, no. Yeah, see, that's, that's big still. Like, you, you and your family, they come from, like, a sporting background. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so my mum and dad were in athletics. Uh, my dad competed at a high level. Mum was in the, the Olympics, Commonwealth, uh, represented Great Britain. So, um, in that sense, she went to two uh, Olympics uh, as a sprinter. Uh, my dad was also a sprinter, and he was also a sprint coach for many uh, Great British athletes. Uh, and I have, you know, godparents that were were in athletics also, um, Heather and Linford Christie. So um, a very sporting background. Uh, that kind of helps yeah. uh, it, the way I am as a person, the way I am as a player, and kind of helped uh, my path in, in the game, uh, knowledge of sport. And not only that, I feel it's kind of helped me on the field, having a sporting background. You know, you're a sport yourself. So, uh, you know, sprinting-wise, I was one of the fastest, yeah. Uh, do I say I was the fastest at Arsenal? Yeah. Your brother, even your brother. Like, I remember when I went to one of, um, one of your dad's thing that I think he used, to, he used to keep it in... Where was it? When we used to do the thing on the running track. Oh, yeah, Woodford. Woodford, oh, yeah. Woodford yeah, Woodford or Wolfhamstow, yeah. Yeah, I went to one of his... I'm not going to lie. After one of them training sessions, I was conked. Yeah, no, yeah, my dad don't mess around. When it comes to coaching, you don't mess around, bro. I'm telling you, even with me, you don't mess around. He pushed me hard, but I'm glad you done that, you know. Uh, we had a good little group uh, that he started forming just for helping, uh, you know, technique, running techniques that kind of helps in football, uh, but just good fitness, fitness-wise. And I mean, now even when I call him and say, Dad, I'm running, you know, however many kilometres, he says, you crazy. I said, but, you know, I'm not getting younger, you know, and I'm 
still quite fast, but not as fast as I used to be. But uh, I feel if I can take what he's learned uh, or taught me over the years uh, in long distance or short distance, you know, I can play for even longer. But no, it was, it's, it's good to have a, a help to have a sporting background. Uh, when, but, yeah, of course, but yeah, we're a very competitive family, trust me. We don't, uh, we don't mess around when it comes to games, bro. We all will to win. Gallops, like, Gavin can eat you up in the space of seconds. No, even seconds. I, did, like, I used to think I was faster than Gavin. <laughs> Try to race him. Oh, my God. No, no, you don't race him. You don't race him. That's what best you don't race him. You, you, you think you could beat him, you think you could beat him, but you think you're winning and he'll come back, trust me. Yeah, no, Gavin was way too quick. Obviously, like you said, along your journey with football, yeah. you've got a lot of knowledge and um, like you're taking it to right now, you're at Miami. Yeah, yeah. And what's it like there being like a, a player? Um, a player, I'd say it's, it's, I'd say the level right now, we're in like the non league of, of the, uh, of the, English league, so it's a completely different format to how it is in England. Yeah. So it's getting used to and understanding that format, how the American side do things, run things. It's it's completely different. Uh, even when I was in the USL and MLS, things are cut run and done, organised completely different. Um, so for me now, it's not all about the playing side. It's like you know working with the management team, the 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 front, the office team, the the owners on building this team, um, and trying to get it to USL level, um, and just creating a name for ourselves as a team, and as as we want to be um, not just a team but like a brand, you know. Uh, we want to set up an academy. Uh, we want to set up a women's team, like a a, a girls team. We want to. Uh, there's a lot we want to do, uh, and also we want to attract uh, players. Uh, from all over, uh, not just from Europe, but uh, from South America, everywhere. Uh, so we feel that not everyone can get to Inter Miami in the MLS, of course, that's Beckham's team, not everyone can get there. Yeah, of course. So we feel we can offer, or, you know, once we get up and running properly, we feel we can offer uh, something uh, that will be appealing to, to players, not just wanting to, to live in Miami, but play for our team and be very successful. Uh, as a player, um, as a team. So we're building something here, uh, something we want to achieve. Uh, and hopefully we'll do that. No, that's great. Man. But all right, we're keeping our eye on a few players, bro. We've got our eye on a couple men. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we've got our eye on a couple men, still. No, no, don't worry, don't worry, no, 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 still. No, I know, I know you've got your eyes on a couple players, still. What I was going to say, obviously, what made you... Obviously, was, I mean, what made you go to the States? Was it a decision that you made with your family and your other half and that, or could you have yeah. It was a decision, it's a decision with your family, of course, but at the end of the day, I've always wanted to, to go to America and play. Yeah. Uh, even when I was at Middlesbrough, to, coming up to the time where, where uh, I wasn't playing, I say, I tell you now, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to go there. And I was talking to one of the players, Kai Kamara, and Seb Pines, and I, they went out there, and I'm like, no, nah, I need to get out to America. I, I, that's where I feel like I can yeah. achieve good things, you know. Uh, but it didn't work out, you know, after Billsborough, and it took me a little while to get out to, to America. But no, I've always wanted to, to go to America, and it, yeah, it, was, a, it was a tough decision. Um, but I felt like at the stage of my career after leaving Dagenham, yeah. it was the, the next thing for me. Uh, and, you know, it done my playing career for, for longer rather than um, a short, say, career in England. So it was, it was a kind of a decision that um, do I try and fight for something in England or go to America where I want to uh, end up playing longer and live longer and uh, create something like we're creating in my own. No, that's... Dude, you but getting... it weren't easy, bro. It weren't easy. It took us... Yeah. I think me and my I... friend uh, during the time we used to sit down and write letters and emails to clubs uh my friend angst who we're doing a, a documentary on too but uh bro we used to write letters and everything to clubs when i wasn't in a club after i think mill when i left mill i wasn't in a in a club and uh, we literally bro was writing letters and emails to clubs 
in America uh, from MLS to USL, trying to get even saying to them, look, this is what I can offer. I've got this. I've, you know, I even wrote a CV and everything. Uh, so we're trying to just get to America, basically. So it's like you're sending a CV to America. And people are saying, oh, it'd be easy for you to get there. I say, bro, that is, it was the hardest thing to get to. And people are saying, ah, oh, with your CV, blah, 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 this and that, it'd be easy. Yeah, it wasn't easy at all. Um, and it took me maybe another couple of years before I got out to America. And I still went on trial. And um, I finally got to Cincinnati. But uh, a lot of teams at the time said no, bro. No. I literally said no, or they didn't get back to you. And... Uh, or they said they're not looking for someone in your position. So it's like, you know, you don't you either give up or you carry on. Yeah, this is this um, is this is what I like to hear though, Justin. This is the the real the real parts of football. You know, you said you was there after Mill, you like you was writing letters, trying to get clubs to respond and that and like you didn't get no feedback. So like people like a lot of people that that's had your career, they, they don't necessarily show you that. You get me? Like no, I wouldn't even say the struggle. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think in, in a, lot of, a lot of times people only see the highlight of football. So if you didn't see me for like two years in a game, you think, oh, he's gone, he's like, he's off, he's, he's not doing anything. Yeah. And then you see him playing somewhere else, then you're like, oh, he's back playing. But no one knows like, no one knows, like the path you went through yeah, to get there, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was like, it, it was crazy, it was crazy because it was like, I'm sitting there, you know, you haven't got a club and you're thinking, what next? You're thinking, you know, you're trying to get to teams in England. Uh, but for me, it was always like, no, nah, I want to get to America. So it was like, right, I need to write letters, write emails to, and, you know, go on the internet and find out directors' name, managers' names, coaches' names, anyone, you know, in America or in football to try and get, you know, even a trial. Uh, and you have different agents trying to help you, saying they can get you here, they can get you out there, and, for me, it was more like, you know what? I have something to offer myself that I can do myself, you know? I don't can't technically need an agent. So that was my personal opinion. I could do it for it myself. So it's like, you know what? Let me just do it. Uh, see what feedback I get. Uh, and I remember a team telling me, no. And I said to them in the email, and my friend can vouch it, and we'll laugh about it today, is that I said to them, oh, no worries, don't worry. I said, you can say to me, no to me today, but further on down the line, I'll play against your team and my team will be the winner. And, you know, luckily that happened. Jeez. So it was like, I was never going to give up, you know? So it's like, no matter what anyone says, like, you, you either give up or you carry on. And I wasn't going to give up. So I was fighting for, for that chance. Uh, but no, I mean, that's the hard part uh, and reality of football, really. It's, it's life, bro. Uh, uh, a lot of people won't see that side of it. Uh, even getting to Miami was, wasn't easy. Yeah. Uh, getting to Cincinnati and being part of that was, was tough also. Uh, and go on trial. Uh, you're thinking, you know, why do you have to go on trial? But uh, in a sense, you speak to the manager and ask him why. And he's like, because of your age, uh, they want to see what you're like. Basically, they're just testing you to see... Mm. what you're like as a person you know and then find out to so just try and pick your brain to, to really know what um, you're about you know are you coming there for a holiday are you coming there just to mess around or are you really serious about playing but um, I think there's one thing that everyone realised that when I come there I'm coming there to play like I ain't coming there to mess around or joke you know uh, so yeah it's a bit of a tough path to get to America but you know what um uh, even at Cincinnati, it was it was tough to start off with, but uh, a journey I've enjoyed. Uh, playing in front of thirty thousand fans, you can't can't complain. Of course not. Regardless, regardless of what you just said as well, like you're going there to play. It's not like you're coming, you're coming like you're you're like a youth team player. Or not. You're coming with experience and like again, like you said, knowledge. So you're bringing. You're not just bringing the player that you are. You're bringing experience and everything you know about yeah. football. Yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 the, that's the crazy thing about it because you're like, you know, you're trying to say to them, look, what I'm bringing to the team. But they're like, like they don't really care kind of thing. They want to see what you're like as a person and see how you are on the field. Whereas you're telling them, no, nah, I can do all that. But uh, I think it's just them 
really realize it and see it, what you're actually like. Uh, because obviously at the end of the day, they don't know. Uh, but you know, I think once they realize it's a team, I think it's cool to me. Uh, they was kind of, you know, more welcoming and more, more, I'd say, more taken to, to what I brought to the team. And I think the fans uh, at the club realized that also. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, Bill, Bill, that didn't work. But <laughs> since that, it was a good team. No, obviously, um, like you said, back in the days, the, the, like, the, what's it called? The American League wasn't the best, you know. But now, yeah. in the players that's going there, like yourself, the David Villas, the yeah. Bill, um, Carlos Vela, Zlatan, Beckham. Yeah. So, so um, back in the days, even not just that, back in the days, young players, you wouldn't find English players, I would say, English players going abroad. But nowadays, you got... I love English players going from from eighteen, nineteen. Before everyone in London and not, and not London, but UK. And I was thinking, these these youngsters that come from Spain, Africa, Brazil, all these South American countries, they don't give up. Like footballs, the left, they will come here when they're sixteen. Yeah, and, trust me, yeah, yeah, trust me. Yeah. Like, when I was like looking at the English players, obviously, like again, they got they got all from the academies, like you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, they've got a golden spoon, like so. There's just they've got everything. But I'm thinking, if these lot can come at 16, hungry, want to make something out of their career, surely, like English thinking, because you can't just not everyone gets a chance in England. Yeah, of course. Yeah, England's probably the toughest league to get into. Yeah, I remember a couple of players. Yeah, they will get released there, yeah, and they'll just be upset. I'm thinking, why don't you try abroad and that? Like, yeah, no, yeah. Ever, no one ever thought about abroad. It was like, nah, nah. But nowadays, that thousands of young talent going abroad to go and play in the Dutch league, the French league. Yeah. It wasn't like that. No, no, I feel that like that's kind of like the new norm now, is that a lot of players are kind of looking to take their experience or football knowledge outside of England, uh, whether it be Europe, uh, other places across the world, or even America now. I just think it's just a change in how football is. Uh, I think at a young age now, people are realising the opportunities uh, that they might not get in the first team. And I'm like, well, look at uh, Jordan Sancho. He's gone from not playing at Man City to playing at Dortmund and making a big name for himself. So I feel players are like, you know, if they don't feel their path is right, then why not try somewhere else? Of course. I just don't feel that people at the moment realise that there's a lot more uh, outside of the English game. Uh, and I admit, when I was in uh, England, I, I thought about going to America, but I was like, nah, this, I don't know what this is about. But when you actually get there, you realise it's a proper, proper setup. Uh, and I think at first people were scared to move out of their comfort zone. But now people are like, you know what, if there's an opportunity, I'm going to go for it. Of course. Uh, and I think that's what you have to do. I, I don't think you could. Uh, just stay in your comfort zone and think, you know, England's my be-all and end-all because there's a lot uh, that you could achieve and you could become a great player somewhere else, uh, whether that be at a different club or somewhere else across the world. Um, and you could make a big name for yourself across the world, you know. Uh, but I see a lot of change. Because I've been in America, I can see a lot of change. Um, and I see, and I tell people now, if you're a young player that doesn't know what to do next or uh, not sure about their path in English football or not enjoying themselves, why not try and go to somewhere in Europe or America uh, where you could play good football, good standard football, and you could enjoy it. And I feel you would, you would get that love for the game. Okay, yeah, sometimes it does matter what city you're in. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, you're playing regular football, uh, you're enjoying it, you're travelling, you get to see uh, another side of life, different cities every, nearly every weekend, uh, and just a different life. And I feel like you learn new things. No, that's, that's, that's it, man, that's it. I was going to, I was gonna um, say, I had a great career, like I touched up on. Was there ever, like, has there ever been a, like, you had a dark period, like you thought, you know, is this really for me? Yeah, of course I've had a dark period, yeah. Yeah, of course. You have to have them dark periods. 
But uh, yeah, it was a tough time. I'd say Mill was probably my dog. That was kind of a tough time. Yeah. And a time where I thought, you know, I ain't going to... I feel like... Basically, I felt like giving up, but I wasn't going to give up. So uh, I carried on and, and worked through whatever problems um, they had or I had with them. So it was just something that uh, I wasn't going to let me get me down. So that was probably the darkest moment of my career, but one that... Of... <coughs> no, nah, bro, someone keeps calling me on a regular... Oh, it's this, man. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. So what are your plans then? As a young, as a player, you know, been in England most of his career, what do you want to do next? Me? I've always said <laughs> the abroad thing. You know already, I already said the abroad thing is me. Obviously, if, some, if something comes like, that's decent, that's decent, then obviously that's something we have to speak about. But me, <laughs> the, just the, the abroad I'm on that. I'm on that. Because I obviously, I've, I've, like, I've been, I've seen it. I've seen it that, like, you know, champ, league, one, league, I've seen it all. Except for me, that is a Like, like again, stop it coming. Uh, I'll take it, but, like, it's good. Like, it's, it's just trying, it's just to experience something different, isn't it? Because yeah. once you've done, like, the English leagues, you've been in it, it's kind of repetitive, you know? Whereas you go somewhere else, and you're experiencing something completely different. Like, me going to Cincinnati was a completely different thing. Like, completely different. Like, the way of life, everything was just different about the whole experience. Like, even playing on turf is completely different. Like, you know, you're playing on turf. You play, sometimes we play in front of 30,000, and the next week we're playing in front of, like, I mean, 10 people. And it's like, you know, we're playing in, in a huge stadium. We train in the stadium where five people are watching. But, like, but this ain't normal. But it is normal. Yeah, it's... it's, it's... I remember... I remember... Crazy. Justin moves some ways, yeah. And if they're watching, they don't know who I'm. Like they used to talk about money, money or football. Money's not everything. But what I used to do, they said, oh, stay in a prison for this amount of money, or go to Dubai for like four mil, four mil a year or something. I was like, bro, I'll go to Dubai four mil a year. It doesn't mean I don't love football. Someone told me once, yes. Yeah, so yeah. I love football, but someone told me when I was young, a first thing player said, Listen, football's all about looking after your family, so do what, whatever's right for you and your family. You think yeah, that I'm going to get, like, okay, the wages, but Dubai's offering me this. And they'll say, they'll, they'll say to me, like, oh, I'll never, like, I'll never go abroad. But if you ask them now where they're playing, <laughs> they're playing abroad. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. That's, that's the thing. That's what happens. I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to look at, care after your family. And at the end of the day, loyalty in football is gone. So, and, you know, in football, you live a short career. So you've got to make the most out of it, no matter what anyone tells you. Uh, you know, people are going to tell you, ah, oh, they shouldn't be on this amount of money or they should be on this amount of money. At the end of the day, so what? Like, they've, they've earned that money. Like, no one can take that away from them. So who are we to tell them that they should be on this amount or that amount of money? Like, they're on that amount of money just... Nothing, no one can do about it. So at the end of the day, they want to take care of whoever they want to take care of. They'll spend their money how they want to spend it. Same as, you know, we spend our money how we want to spend it. But at the end of the day, we've got to take care of our family. So if someone's going to offer you X amount of money, uh, no matter what anyone tells you about loyalty, because you can be as low as you want to a team. Yeah. When that day comes and they're ready to get rid of you, do you think they're going to be loyal to you? No, of course not. No, of course not. Course so not. for me, it's like, you know, yeah, you're loyal to the team that you're playing for, for the time being. But when they're ready to get rid of you, they'll get rid of you. Yeah. That over the years. Like, you could be, I've, I've been loyal to teams and, you know, you don't get nothing back. But, you know, that's how it was. So at the end of the day, you've got to make the most out of football as you can. Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, no one's going to say, well, he earned this amount of money. What's he done? What's he done with the money? They're gonna, you're going to be forgotten, you know? Because someone else will come and they'll be the next talking point. So for me, it's like you've got to make the most out of, of the game as you can. Uh, Maximise, you know, your full potential. Uh, and play for as long as you can and make the most. 
you know, if it's money, you can make, make money. If you want to achieve great things, uh, you know, win things, then you win things. But at the end of the day, you've got to want to do it for your own reasons, not for someone else's reason, you know? So, so, you know, uh, that's, that's, it's life. It's, it's life. The, that's how the, the world is, you know? And, you know, people will criticise top players. People will criticise us as players, you know? And we're not at the top. You know, we'll miss a chance and people will be like, oh, you're rubbish, you're this, you're that. But at the end of the day, bro, we're, we're watching TV. We'll be, we'll be seeing the top man's missing. We'll be saying, oh, how could you miss that chance? <laughs> right, that's just normal. Yeah. But that's life. So I just feel that, you know, no matter what it is, people are always going to criticise you or people will praise you. And that's in life also. Like, people in work, even if you work to nine to five, there'll be people that are happy for you in your job and there'll be people that are not happy for you. I think as long as you're true to yourself and you're uh, and you know what, what you want in life and the path you want to go in and you can help your family and help yourself then that's the main thing. Yeah. You know, you can't listen to, to what people think about you because people are always going to be positive and people are always going to be negative about you. So at the end of the day you've got to do what's right for you and what's right for your family. No, of course. No, but just, just. I wanted, I wanted to take it back. But I, I wanted to take it back. My friend asked me, oh, "United away." What you say? United away. Yeah. Are oh, you asking about Ronaldo? <laughs> oh boy! Do you know how many times I get sent that video? <laughs> No, bro, I, I think I must get that video sent no, to me. I don't get it, but I, I get it. When Christian and the man wants to show them. No, but the, for me, yeah, like, I get sent that video all the time. People laughing, and we laugh and joke about it. And people be like, I see the, the memes and the captions, and I'm laughing because I'm like, boy, this is funny. But, like, bro, for me, it's like, he didn't go nowhere. Yeah, true, Like, I'm ready. If you see the video, I'm ready. You want to go that way, I'm ready. If you wanted to go the other way, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready. So you're only going into the corner to try and showboat and time waste and mm. do all these skills. But, bro, you're not going nowhere. So you can do all the skills you want. You're only going to go into the corner. And at the end of the day, I'm trying to get the ball. And if I kick your foot, it's your own problem because you're doing skills hey, in front of me. The way, hey, hey, just, it's the way you kick the foot that you're fight. <laughs> No, I was mad because I don't like people like you're, you're trying to take you're trying to take me for an idiot, bro. Like all the skills, all that. My team's losing. It's the last couple of minutes of the game. My team's losing, and you just come there trying to do skills and all that. No, I'm not. I'm not about. I'm not, I'm not a person who don't mess around, bro. <laughs> I'm not person who don't mess around, bro. I don't, I don't. I don't care, bro. So yeah, I get sent that video all the time. I think at least two or three times a week. As soon as someone sees it on something, they send it to me straight, just laughing. <laughs> and everyone asks me about that. I just laugh, bro. I said, oh. I said, I don't know what else you want me to do, bro. I can't say nothing about it, you know. What can I say? It's it's it happened, you know. He did it as long as I didn't fall on the floor or do nothing stupid, you know. It's it's all right, man. Because uh, I thought I thought I was I was. You know knows what? And you know, oh, thank you, thank you. I'm thinking what. No, but everyone feels like I went to like boot him and all that, like I was going to kick the floor. Bro, if, I, if I'll be honest, if I really would have kicked him, he would have been on the floor for a couple of minutes, bro. But I didn't really kick him that hard, you know. It looks like I kicked him hard, but I didn't really kick him that hard because if I would have kicked him, it would have been a red straight. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Do you know what I'm saying? So it was like, I'm going for the ball, but his foot was there because he was doing whatever. Yeah, man, I said he's watching it now. But like, <laughs> but like, I hit his foot, so, you know, if it was really me kicking him, I would have been really, really sent off. But, you know, it is what it is, bro. It's, it's football. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it happens, you know? I mean, I'm a defender, so when you got someone like Chris Ronaldo, who was at the prior, who was doing all sorts of madness for, for United at the time, bro, if someone's doing that, what could you know, what could you do about it as a defender? It's, you know, he's dominated, you know, United and, and other defenders, so what can you do about it? No, 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 no that's, that wasn't a red, bro. That, was, that, was, that, was, that wasn't even a yellow card, bro. <laughs> a JD said it's a yellow, a red card. No chance, bro.
top, top players. Who would you say one of your hard players? So... I am Robin. Nightmare to play against. I am Robin. Yeah, yeah headache, headache, headache. Non stop headache. Headache, headache, bro. From the time you know you're gonna get play against Iron Robin, bro, it's, it's it's stress, bro. From the night before, you're losing sleep. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you're not sleeping. <laughs> no, for me, it's just the fact that he was just literally, bro. He was fast. He was all left foot. It was like kind of a tricky, not bit, loads of skills, but like pure, just tri just trickery, bro. Like he wasn't skillful, just had. Trickery, bro, his left foot. Like, no matter what anyone said, everyone says, oh, don't show him on his left foot, show him on his right foot. But, bro, he's probably the one of the hardest players ever to stop going on his left foot. Like, you think, yeah, it's easy, you know, you get taught as, as, as youngsters, you've got to show them on the right foot, you've got to show them a certain way. But he is a player that's mastered just using his left foot. So no matter whether you showed it inside, if he was playing on the right, he'll come in on his left foot. If you show him outside, he will still go on his left foot and then cut back on his left foot. So it's like, I don't know, bro. It was, it was headache. It was, it was headache, bro. It was not easy playing against this one. And then he's sharp. I remember thinking he's going to go sprint down the line, bro. Run full speed down the line, trying to chase after him. I'm not going to lie, bro. He stopped. And I kept on running. And then I stopped myself and looked back. Bro, I swear. He had stopped dead, like, in a split second. Bro, I mean, when he was sharp, he was sharp, and he stopped dead. And I said, nah, bro. I said, nah, that's different. And he had the ball to his feet and was running at me. I said, nah, I don't know how that's possible, bro. Like, he was running full speed and literally just stopped straight away. I said, nah, this, is, this ain't no joke, bro. I said, I said, yeah, if you could see videos of this man, I said, nah. That was headache, bro. Um, obviously, you if it was to give the best 11, who would it be? Best 11, what? For, that I played with? Yeah, like, whoever's been at Arsenal or whatever, your best 11. Oh, no, nah, bro, it's hard to say my best 11 because I played with a lot of good players, bro. Uh, you have to say the invincible team that made it Arsenal, I mean, that's kind of like a full 11 itself, you know? Uh, but nah, outside um, of Arsenal, I mean, I've played with some great players, like amazing players. And I think for um, every team, um, barring Millwall, uh, I probably have like a best 11 of players. Uh, but I'd say the best time as a starting 11 I had was with uh, Middlesbrough and Cincinnati, uh, just for the way we was playing. Um, I think first and foremost, Middlesbrough was the best team I've been on uh, for the players we had. Uh, Skill-wise, we had everything. Uh, why we didn't get promoted, we don't know. But uh, for a starting eleven, we had a we had a good team. When you were playing, huh? Front four. Front four. We had Ledesma. We had Emnes. We had. Uh, who else did we have? Leo Elita was there. We had some good players, bro. We had some good players. Stuart Downing was there. Nah, we had, we had a team, bro. We had a team. We had a team. We had a team, bro. We had a team. We were scoring goals for fun, bro. Yeah, Riverside. Riverside? Riverside, yeah. Tony Mowbray, bro. Big manager. Yeah, we had Southgate first, then unfortunately he got, he got sacked, and then we had Mowbray and uh, good manager Mowbray, good, good footballing manager. Good team we had. Good, good. So, I think where you are. Yeah, I feel lockdown, Hubby. It's, it's getting up now. We're looking at the, the end part of lockdown now, so. Uh, for me, I've just worked on my fitness, really. Bro, I'll be running every day, just doing a madness, really. Just probably silly running, but, you know, it keeps me sane, keeps me active, uh, keeps me in a trading mindset. So, uh, yeah, and there's a lot of we're doing with the team and uh, other projects I'm working on. So, uh, they'll be happening 
uh, later on this week and, and next week we start back training, I think. So, yeah, it was good, bro. Uh, slowly getting there, getting there, getting there. Once we get this team up and running, bro, things will be harder but easier. So, yeah. No, no, anytime, bro, anytime, anytime. I'm available anytime, bro. Charlie, keep doing your thing, yeah? Thank you. Take care, bro. Later. Yeah.